Hello, everybody. So I have no conflict of interest to disclose. So I look at skin as the uh, outermost immuno immunological interface of the body. It is home not only to longer hand cells, which has been um, in intensely studied, but also for several uh, subsets of dendritic cells in the dermis, and as well as macrophages. Now we know that there are a number of T cells that reside in the skin. Now the skin surface co is covered with microbes, so there must be a lot of immune responses going on in skin, but the mechanisms by which these uh, resident cells um, retain their residency and achieve their immunological polarity has yet to be uh, fully understood. Now, if you think about the barrier of the skin, the stratum corneum is often thought as the outermost barrier, but in human scalp and uh, mammalian body, hair shaft produced by the hair follicles provide the first line of defense. So what is the function of uh, hair follicles? The apparent functions are um, protecting against physical trauma, UV light, and thermal changes. But we began to think whether or not the hair follicles had immunological properties. And we got interested in this question through these, our studies of Langerhans cells. Now, we think Langerhans cells are very important cells. They are antigen-presenting cells in the epidermis. And upon sensing perturbation, they will extend their dendrites through the epidermal tight junction to acquire uptake of bacteria and bacterial toxins. Then they will go to the lymph node to induce uh, the production of neutralizing antibodies specific for these uh, agents, um, thereby loading the body with these antibodies. So if an agent enters the body from a distant site, the body is protected from that agent. Now, remember, this, this immune response occurs before these agents breach the epidermal barriers. So we call this process preemptive immunity. So when longer hand cells get act activated, they will eventually move out from the epidermis. And we wonder the mechanism by which the uh, skin replenishes these longer hand cells. So what I will tell you today is that upon mechanical stress, the keratinocytes in the infundibulum and isthmus will produce chemokines, CCL20 and CCL2, to attract DCs and DC precursors to sites of minor trauma. And during this process, a subset of ce uh, cells in the bulge area will produce the chemokine CCL8, and this appears to inhibit um, longer hand cell infiltration into the epidermis. And I have to apologize to the uh, hair research community here that this telogen hair follicle contains the dermal villa. Sorry. <laughs> Now, the association of longer hand cells with hair follicles have been described. So if you cut a, a mouse skin section and stain the primate CK class 2, you will see that longer hand cells are intimately associated with the hair follicles. And although hair follicles are targets in several inflammatory or autoimmune diseases, its immunological function in the physiological state had not been fully uh, explored. So we decided to look at uh, uh, the population of longer hand cells in longer and DTR mice. So these mice have the diphtheratoxin receptor knocked into the longer gene, which the longer hand cells express. And you might know that the mice don't express diphtheratoxin receptor. So by giving these mice DT, diphtheratoxin DT, we are able to uh, deplete the longer and expressing cells. Now here, in the epidermal sheets of longer, uh, uh, longer and DTR mice, so we prepare epidermal sheets to get a broad on FOS view, view, okay? And you can see abundant numbers of longer hand cells. When the mice are given DT, longer hand cells are eradicated. And as early as day seven and day 14, you'll see these uh, very small numbers of uh, clusters of longer hand cells that repopulate the epidermis. Now, when we co-visualize this with uh, these markers, longer and epigam and MHC class two, and epigam is expressed by the hair follicles as well as the longer hand cells, you can see that this longer hand cell population seems to occur around the hair follicles. Now, because this uh, process is very, very slow, we decided to monitor longer hand cell precursor entry during inflammation. So we gave the longer and DTR mice diphtheratoxin, and then topically applied the haptan TNCV to cause inflammation, and harvested epidermal sheets to monitor uh, repopulation. So in control mice, that were uh, applied with PBS, longer hand cell repopulation is very, very slow. 
However, in mice that were topically applied with TNCB, you can see that these MHC class II positive but longer and epicam negative cells come into the epidermal compartment via hair follicles. Now these cells acquire gradient levels of Langerhans and Epcam, and by uh, day 14 after, um, after application, they have acquired uh, Langerhans cell phenotype. Now for the sake, um, in the inter interest of time, I will not show it here, but by using fate mapping and bone marrow chimeric uh, mice, we showed that uh, a subset of monocytes in the bone marrow is capable of giving rise to Langerhans cells, and we call these uh, MHC class to single positive cells pre-LCs to reflect their uh, nature as immediate longer hand cell precursors. Now, when we do vertical sections during this repopulation process, you will see that pre-LCs, before they uh, abundantly populate the interfollicular epidermis, they accumulate to the hair follicles, leading us to believe that the hair follicles attracted these pre-LCs and allowed uh, the epidermal entry of pre-LCs. But this is a snapshot picture. So we decided to visualize leukocytes in vivo. To do this, we took bone marrow from mice that ubiquitously expressed GFP, and then transplanted it into lethally irrated longer DTR mice. And then we depleted the remnant longer hand cells, the host longer hand cells, and then tape stripped the mouse ears to induce perturbation, and observed uh, the mouse ears with multifoto uh, via multifoto microscopy. Now the movie I'm about to show you is an early time point. 30 minutes to 4.5 hours after tape stripping. Now these uh, green structures are hair, uh, hair shafts reflecting the position of hair follicles, and these green dots are donor-derived uh, leukocytes, and these, these were mostly dendritic cells or macrophages. When we tape strip the mouse ears, this is what happens. So the donor-derived leukocytes massively accumulate to the hair follicles, giving us confidence that there was, there must be a mechanism by which hair follicles recruited these uh, leukocytes to sites of minor trauma. And we don't think these are all longer hand cell precursors. It was around 18 hours after tape stripping when we found these uh, cells with dendritic morphology consistent with them being pre-LCs appear in the hair follicles and then appear to uh, seem to crawl, crawl into the epidermal component. So in vivo, uh, longer hand cells do repopulate through the hair follicles. So we were interested in understanding the mechanism of longer hand cell recruitment by the hair follicles, and to do this, we had to enable the sorting of different keratinocyte subsets to perform gene analyses via real-time PCR. So what we did was we, we combined um, established and new markers to, to highlight the uh, different compartments of the hair follicles or the epidermis. So stem cell antigen one, a well-known um, hematopoietic stem cell marker is actually expressed in the interfollicular epidermis to the infundibulum area. EPCAM is expressed throughout the uh, epidermis, but is highly expressed in the infundibulum and in particular in the isthmus area. CD34 is a well-known marker that highlights the whole bulge area, and alpha-6 integrin outlines the basal layer bulge. So you can see this EPCAM high area sits on top of the bulge area. All of these markers can be used by flow cytometry to sort cells. So we sorted the cells, the keratinocytes, into those from the infundibulum, interfollicular epidermis, isthmus, and the bulge, the bulge further into basal layer bulge and the superbasal layer bulge. And when we sorted and did real-time PCR analysis, we found that the infundibulum expressed um, the chemokine CCL20, which is a ligand for CCR6. The isthmus expressed CCL2, which is a ligand for CCR2, and these are both uh, strong uh, myelin cell chemoattractants. The bulge area did not express much chemokines, but a subset of cells, uh, su the super basal layer bulge cells, expressed CCL8, which is a CCR8 ligand. Now, chemokines are not trivial to visualize, but we were able to visualize CCL8. So this is standing for CCL8. Um, and epidermal sheets in unmanipulated mice. But when you tape strip the mouse ears 18 hours after, you can see that CCL8 is highly upregulated. So these chemokines do get induced upon perturbation. Now, we wanted to know the uh, role of uh, chemokine chemokine receptor axis during um, longer hand cell and pre LC uh, entry into the epidermis. 
So we took bone marrow from Kimokai knockout mice of CD45.2 background, and then also from um, wild type mice of CD45.1 background, and we mixed it one to one in one to one ratio, and then transferred it into lethally irated longer in DTR mice. And after reconstitution, we depleted the host longer hand cells, and then harvested the epidermis as well as the blood to compare their chimerism. Now, um, chemokine receptors are utilized when cells uh, emigrate from the bone marrow into the bloodstream. Okay? So by comparing this ratio, if, uh, if the chemokine receptors um, contribute equally, this uh, chimerism ratio should be 1. Okay? So when you look at CCR1 knockout mice, their chimerism ratio is a little bit low, indicating that they CCR1 is required from the bone marrow to the bloodstream. However, when you look at the chimerism ratio of longer hand cells of pre LCs, this is not significantly different, indicating that CCR1 is not utilized during epidermal entry. In contrast, when we look at CC, uh, CCR2 knockout mice, you see that the longer hand cells in pre LCs are dramatically decreased, indicating the important role of CCL2, CCR2 axis. Similarly, but not identically, uh, in the absence of CCR2, longer hand cells are not much affected, but pre-LCs are significantly decreased. Now, in contrast, when we look at CCR8 knockout uh, bone marrow, we saw that infiltration of longer hand cells were rather increased. Okay. This told us that uh, dur during physiological state, um, C these chemokine receptor uh, chemokine axis is used for the recruitment of longer hand cells, whereas CCL8, CCR8 axis inhibits longer hand cell entry into the epidermis. So we asked whether hair follicles were actually critical for pre-LCs to enter the epidermis. So to do this, we used um, skin graft from genetically modified mice as well as their wild type litter mate. Uh, 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 skin graft. So we grafted these um, each onto the same nude mouse, and you can see that the, whereas the wild type litter mate graft outgrows hair, this um, skinless graft or hairless graft does not outgrow hair, as, as reflected here, shown here in this H and E sections. So to these grafts, we applied mometasone, which uh, eradicates the epidermal longer hand cells, and then topically applied TNCB to the skin graft to induce uh, pre LC infiltration. And we found that whereas pre-LCs were able to infiltrate hair-bearing graft, they were not able to infiltrate into hairless graft, indicating that hair follicles are critical for the uh, entry of uh, pre-LCs. So to summarize this part, uh, longer hand cells repopulated the epidermis through the hair follicles, and this uh, hair follicles were critical for their entry. Hair follicle keratinocyte subsets uh, uh, expressed certain chemokines. And CCL2, CCR2, as well as CCL20, CCR2 axes enhanced pre-LC longer hand cell repopulation, whereas CCL8, CCR8 axis appears to be inhibitory. So again, to recap what the, the findings here, so upon mechanical stress, these uh, keratinocytes in the infundibulum isthmus ex each express CCL20 and CCL2 to induce the recruitment of DCs and DC precursors to sites of minor trauma, and the subset of keratinocytes in the bulge area produce CCL8 to inhibit the infiltration of longer hand cells to the epidermal components, and we think this mechanism exists to uh, protect the stem cells from excessive leukocyte infiltration. Now, we got very interested in this um, immunological aspect of the hair follicles, and so we wondered whether or not they could play other roles in, in maintaining skin immunity. So we decided to focus on the resident memory T cells. So resident memory T cells have been, um, the importance of them have been established in the recent years by uh, Rachel Clark and Thomas Cupper's groups as well as uh, Frank Carboni's group in uh, Australia. And our work really builds on their work. So resident memory T cells uh, in the skin are important in lymphoma as well as these other T-cell mediated uh, diseases that have yet to be uh, demonstrated. What we'll show you in, uh, in this work is that these resident memory T-cells 
uh, in the skin exhibit epidermotropism, per, uh, particularly to the hair follicles. And the hair follicle keratinocytes will express, produce IL-7 as well as IL-15 to support the epidermotropism of these TRMs. And we will talk, I will try to demonstrate the importance of this uh, hair follicle derived cytokines in the context of a new model of cutaneous T cell lymphoma. So when we cut well type sex skin sections, we indeed saw that both CD4 and CD8 T cells existed uh, in the hair follicles. Within the epidermal component, CD4 uh, T cells existed only in the hair follicles, whereas CD8 T cells uh, could be found both in the interfollicular epidermis and in the hair follicles. And you can see that uh, the dermal CD4 TR, uh, T cells also accumulate around the hair follicles. We prepared wild type uh, uh, epidermal cell suspension from wild type mice, and when we excluded uh, longer hand cells and gamma delta T cells in the epidermis, we saw discrete populations of CD8, CD4 T cells. Quantification re revealed that the numbers of CD4 T cells in the epidermis was comparable to that in the dermis, and CD8 T cells only existed, existed only in the epidermis, which is consistent with uh, what others have uh, recorded. When we looked at the memory phenotype of these cells by CD44 and CD62L, we saw that they were of effector memory phenotype. And by CD103 and CD69 staining, they were of resident phenotype. Now, Tom Cuppert's group has, uh, has reported a very interesting finding. So uh, upon virus, vir uh, viral infection, they used vaccine uh, virus. And when vaccine virus are infected onto for example, the left here, the T cells come in and eradicate the virus, right? But, and TRMs accumulate to the uh, primary site of the infection, but they also spread out and distribute to the whole body surface. So when the uh, virus enters from a distant site, the TRMs confer long-term immunity. Now, this widespread distribution of TRMs uh, reflects steady-state trafficking, and this is what we wanted to recapitulate. So what we simply did was we took wild type splenocytes which contain T cells and then transferred it into lymphopenic RAG2 knockout mice. So when lymphocytes are put into a lymphopenic condition, they undergo what is called homeostatic proliferation. And we hope that during this massive proliferation, the T cells will fill up whatever niche that they were meant to fill up. And this seems to be exactly what is happening. Um, around a day 10 after transfer, we, thought we saw both uh, CD4 and CD8 T cells enter the epidermis, and they reached levels that were comparable to wild type animals by day 14. When we looked at epidermal sheaths during this process, we saw that CD4 T cells accumulated to the hair follicles, and CD8 T cells also accumulated to the hair follicles, but they were also found in interfollicular epidermis, consistent with the wild type mice. Now, you might know that the generation or the maintenance of memory T cells require um, some cytokines, and these are IL-7 and IL-15. So we looked at, analyzed these epidermotropic uh, TRMs for IL-15, IL-7 receptor expression, and indeed, they do. Both, both subsets express both cytokine receptors. Again, we sorted the epidermal keratinocytes into five subsets and performed real-time PCR to identify which cells are making, uh, producing IL-7 and 15, and found, again, that it is the infundibulum and the isthmus keratinocytes that predominantly express uh, mRNA for both IL-15 and IL-7. And this expression pattern is um, very similar to the chemokines. Therefore, it appears that this superficial part of the hair follicles support to um, uh, uh, enhance immunity. Now, in the interest of time, we did a number of bone marrow chimeric and, and inducible ablation experiments to show the role of um, hair follicle derived uh, cytokines, but I will just uh, do a schematic uh, demonstration here. So, in the absence of IL 15 from the hair follicles, only the CD8 TRMs are affected. Okay? And when we induce the ablation of IL 7 from the hair follicles, both CD4 and CD8 TRM are affected, okay? So they critically rely on these hair follicle-derived cytokines. 
So the biology of these uh, skin TRMs going right into the epidermis in the absence of any inflammatory cues reminded us of the important disease cutaneous T-cell lymphoma, CTCL. There are two classic types of CTCL, mycosis fungoides and Sedgwick syndrome. In mycosis fungoides, these erythematous plaque will ultimate, plaques will ultimately go into tumors, and when we biopsy these sites, you will see that lymphoma cells exhibit epiderm epidermotropism, um, entering, infiltrating the epiderm uh, interfollicular epidermis as well as the hair follicles. And again, uh, Rachel Clark and Tom Cupper's groups have shown that these lymphoma cells are of resident memory T-cell phenotype. In contrast, in Cesare syndrome, where you, in which you will see lymphoma cells in the circulation, they are of central memory, central memory phenotype. So it's very interesting to, to think that the uh, memory phenotype of the lymphoma cells actually influence the disease phenotype. Now, although we wanted to uh, study the role of hair follicle cytokines in lymphoma, there was, not a, there was no appropriate model for cutaneous T cell lymphoma that we could use. So we did a literature search, and we found that um, loss of function mutation of the tumor suppressor gene, CDKN2A, as well as the oncogene MYC, uh, gain of function mutation of oncogene MYC, have been reported in human CTCL. So we decided to make a new model. So to do this, we isolated CD4 T cells from CDK and 2A knockout mice, and then retrovirally transduced MYC, MYC GFP, into these T cells. So these T cells are not only lacking the tumor suppressors, but are also driven by MYC. Okay? And on top of that, they are transferred into this interactive knockout mice in this lymphopenic condition, and this drives them toward proliferation. So interestingly, when mice received these uh, manipulated T cells, they exhibited this erythrodermic phenotype, redness of this uh, whole body surface. In contrast, the wild-type mice, or the mice that received wild-type CD4 T cells did not exhibit a phenotype. When we analyzed uh, these epidermotropic T cells, we found that the majority expressed MYC-GFP. And interestingly, they upregulated their uh, IL-7 receptor expression. And the uh, HNA section staining of the skin biopsy shown here uh, shows abundant epidermotropism, both in the hair follicles and the interfollicular epidermis. And I hope you can see the arrows here. Um, arrows point to the typical lymphocytes that infiltrate into the hair follicles. And you can see here in this blow-up that uh, these um, are very much reminiscent of lymphoma cells. And when we stained for KI67, and this is also a bit hard to see with the keratinocytes expressing KI67, but the T cells that infiltrate into the epidermis express KI67, therefore they are bear to be proliferating in situ and skin. So we think this model recapitulates an aspect of CTCL. Now, using this model, we can finally address whether or not CD4 TRMs uh, depend on hair follicle cytokines even after they become lymphoma cells. So we took these um, transduced T cells, transferred it into either RAG2 knockout mice or RAG2 knockout mice that constitutively lack uh, IL-7 from the hair follicles. When we did that, uh, the mice that uh, have IL-7 in, in the hair follicles exhibited the erythrodermic phenotype. However, mice that lack IL-7 from the hair follicles did not. And you can see the difference, uh, the attenuation of um, lymphoma cell infiltration into uh, IL-7 deficient skin. And the quantification is shown here. The impact is stronger in the epidermis, but there is also some effect in the dermis. So we looked in human CTCL samples to try to see if this IL-7, IL-7 receptor axis uh, potentially existed in humans. And we were able to obtain several samples, and this, this one I'm showing you is from the scalp. And when we make transfer sections like this and stain with an anti-IL-7 antibody, we saw signals in the infundibulum area as well as the superbulb area. And this, again, coincides with the human hair follicles uh, chemokine expression. When we looked at the lymphoma cells that infiltrated around the hair follicles, we saw that they had, had high expressions of IL-7 receptor strongly suggesting that this IL-7, IL-7 receptor axis exists in humans, and we hope that this um, 
represents an attractive therapeutic target. So to summarize this part, both CD4 and CD8 TRMs existed in the hair follicles. IL-7 and IL-15 produced by the hair follicles supported TRM epidermotropism, and CD4-positive lymphoma cells were dependent on hair follicle-derived IL-7. And this IL-7 and IL-7 receptor axis appears to exist in human CTCL. Now, I have to say that there's no good reagents to block IL-7 and IL-7 receptor interaction. And I know for the non-immunologists, uh, IL-7 receptor signaling is, is a bit um, intimidating to think about. But when you, when you look at this diagram, it is not so hard anymore, right? So as uh, Angel Cristiano has uh, familiarized the Dermatology Society with, with her alopecia work, IL-7, downstream of IL-7 uh, receptor signaling, it requires JAK3 and JAK1. And we know that there are available agents that inhibit uh, each JAK3 and JAK1. And um, I will like throw it out to the clinical researchers here whether or not uh, these JAK inhibitors will be useful for the treatment of CDCL and perhaps other um, t uh, chronic uh, T cell mediated um, skin inflammation that, that, um, that uh, involves TRMs. So, to summarize the whole point, Whole, whole, well, uh, the whole talk. So not only do hair follicles produce, uh, recruit skin DC trafficking and regulate their entry into the epidermis by chemokine production, they provide interleukins that allow TRM persistence in the epidermis. So the keratinocytes in the infant development isthmus produced IL-15 to support the epidermotropism of CD8 TRM and the same keratinocytes produce IL-7 to support CD4 TRM, both wild type and lymphoma. So finally, I would like to thank uh, the people that were involved in the, in the two works. It's, it was not uh, possible to list every single person, but uh, the TRM hair follicle uh, project was done by a dermatologist at Keio University, Takei Adachi, and Tetsuro Kobayashi um, was a big help for the, both of the two projects. And last but not, not, not least, um, I would like to thank my previous boss, Masa Amagai, as well as my current boss, Mark Udi, for their um, longstanding support. Thank you for your attention.